Rob Danforth here uh, to this talk today. I did hear him earlier also, and I was so impressed, and I requested him to uh, give us give a talk to here to our group of people, and which he very kindly agreed, and that's the reason he is here today. So he will give us some tips on how to manage your plants, be it indoor or outdoor, in your front yard or backyard, right? Particularly the invasion of the bugs, how to uh, control them. That is his main domain. He has about I would put it around 40, 45 years experience as an urban uh, organic vegetable and herb gardener, more than 40, 45 years. And he's been working in the food community garden network also for a number of years. He's been working with Canada Organic uh, Growers Ottawa chapter. He has published uh, quite a few papers on subjects like uh, Colorado, potato beetles, box reds, composting, cutworms, and so on and so forth. So if I continue speaking about Rob, I think I'll myself take about 40 minutes. So I don't want to do that. And uh, uh, Rob, I'll give the floor to you. Unmute yourself. And this lovely audience is all yours now for next 40, 45 minutes. And as I said, we will take the questions at the end of the session, not in between, please. So if you have any questions, write it down and later on you can ask. Uh, Rob, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Anil. Uh, <clears throat> I'm uh, coming uh, to you today as a, uh, 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 I guess, to talk about one of my favorite topics and that happens to be gardening. And uh, I've been doing it, as Anil says, for many, many, many years. Um, I'm, uh, excuse me, I'm just trying to get the slideshow here. There we go. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, today's talk is mostly about indoor bugs because most of you, if you are growing indoors, you are getting ready to go outdoors. If we were going the other way, um, what I'm going to tell you today is applicable. If we want to talk about outdoor bugs, you're going to have to ask me a question because that's a whole different Zoom because outdoors you have a whole yard of new bugs. <laughs> bugs that don't come in your house, but I'm going to address the ones in your house. And of course, I'm going to mention uh, a bit of lawn as well because the cinch bug, um, uh, part of the solution to the cinch bug is one of the plants that I wanna talk about. Right now you're looking at, um, uh, off on the right hand or left hand side, um, okra, okra blossom. Uh, you can grow this in Ottawa, I do it every year. And on the other side, a uh, very nice sweet potato. That's uh, Georgia Jet is the uh, cultivar there. And down below, you will find pots that I have started indoors. Okay, this is a pot of microgreens. Um, it's actually mescaline, which is a mixture of greens. Uh, some of it somewhat spicy and lettuce. And here's uh, to make two tomatoes surrounded by basil, the two tomatoes are gonna to go outside. And this is a uh, garlic, but uh, it's not the bulb type garlic, okay? This, uh, you're gonna use the leaves on that one. So let's begin. First of all, always maintain healthy soil and healthy plants. This is the way you have to start, both indoors and outdoors. If the soil is not healthy, I'm sorry, you're going to lose the battle. If the plants are not healthy, many unhealthy plants attract feeding bugs. It's a standard thing from Mother Nature. It's her janitorial service. She likes to uh, bring in the bugs to help get rid of the garbage. And then if we're indoors, you're going to want to work against the indoor bugs. We'll mention the outdoors if you ask the questions later on. So indoors, plant health in containers, because you're going to be in containers. There's no other way. 
first of all, fertilize with organic plant food. Now, um, uh, all uh, plant food is going to have three numbers. I'm sorry uh, if I'm boring you with this, if you already know this, just grit your teeth and wait. Uh, but it has three numbers and the numbers are always NPK, okay? That's alphabetic order. Yeah, I know the K is, uh, but say the words and it's alphabetical. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Okay, where did the K come from? I don't know. Don't worry about it. Okay, so anytime in North America, if you see three numbers together, it's going to be NPK, always. Uh, now you need N for green growth. You need phosphorus and potassium if you're going to have a tomato, okay, or a potato, or a cabbage. Uh, you need that. Aerate the soil once a month. What does that mean? You got to have air at the root of the plant, okay? Uh, in the little thumbnail, you, if you can see me, I've got here a potted plant. If I water from the top, the soil tightens up every single time, okay? Until eventually it gets a really tight ball. The way you know this, A, the pot is very light, like a, like a, a balloon. And secondly, if you pour water in and it runs out the bottom right away, oh, it's too tight. So you take a chopstick, a knitting needle, uh, uh, a cake tester, something. Don't take a blade. Don't take a blade. Take a, something round like this that won't cut your roots, stick it into the soil and wiggle it around and go all the way around the plant, okay? And that way you're going to open up the soil, the water gets in, the air gets in, the water runs out the bottom so the soil stays moist, but these plants do not swim. So no swamp, please. Make sure it drains out the bottom. Um, I do that once a month, or if ever you see the pot tightening up too much. Water so the soil is moist but never swampy. Bottom watering is preferred, and I'll address that later. Safe the pot runoff. Anything that runs out of the bottom of the pot is soil tea. Uh, no, you don't drink it, but you save that, you dilute it, and you put it back. Why? Because the, the soil in this pot is a tea bag. You put water in the top, tea comes out the bottom. That's what you want to uh, dilute and you want to put it back. You don't want to waste the nutrient that's in there. Ensure sufficient light. Now, when you're indoors, and this is the hard part for a lot of people, you're going to need sun or you're going to need full spectrum artificial light. Full spectrum means an ordinary incandescent bulb is not going to do the job. And ordinary fluorescent tubes, no good. You've got to have full spectrum. If you take a rainbow, a rainbow is full spectrum light, fractured. Okay, so uh, what you want is full spectrum light on your plants. That can be expensive. Uh, sunlight, if you've got it, hallelujah. Ensure good air circulation. You don't want fungus and air circulation is prime. And pollinate the flowers with a paintbrush if vegetables are producing fruit and your vegetables are not going outdoors. Yeah, a paintbrush. I didn't bring one, but you can see one pictured here. This is my indoor toolkit. My uh, chopsticks are there. My uh, secateurs in order to trim off the plants. My paintbrush, because I grew tomatoes indoors, they never saw the sun. And I had to go around with my paintbrush and pollinate. Okay, just go from plant to pl flower to flower to flower to flower. And I got tomatoes. It took a long time, but I got tomatoes. Okay. Watering indoors. Uh, obviously, you're going to need watering cans. Um, and bottom watering is best. Instead of watering in the top of these plants, 
water in the tray and let the water be soaking up from the bottom. That way you're not worried so much about tea bag kind of thing. And if you haven't got that ability, then you may want a mister, especially if you've just put seeds on the surface and the seeds haven't set yet. So a mister allows you to spray the seeds. A puddle of water is going to float your seeds around and they're all going to collect in one corner and it's going to be terrible. Okay, so uh, you don't want to pour a bunch of water at the top. You can do a mister. If you like, make your own. Get um, a, a recycled bottle, get a, the top off a spray gun, uh, food safe please, food safe, not something poisonous, uh, and pull the straw out of the bottle, take the gun to the hardware store, fit the tube, buy the tube, come back, punch a hole in the top of your container, whatever container you got, and put uh, the tube into the container and then around the tube, put an elastic so the tube doesn't come back out, okay? Then the bottle sits upright and your gun goes upside down and backwards. This is gonna be important when we talk about bugs. Okay, container watering. Watering from the top, not the best move. Never water the leaves, never. Well, sorry, if you've got orchids, eh, you're gonna to have to mist. Uh, they like high humidity. But if you don't, if you're doing vegetables, uh, then you're going to water from the bottom where the green line is. If you're going to pour from something that doesn't break up the water, don't do this over here where you see we dig a hole. You've probably seen those big machines out on the street where they, uh, they use a water drill to drill down into the soil, okay? Well, that's kind of the same thing. So take a flower pot, one that has drain holes, sit it on the surface, fill it full of water, the water will slowly come out and spread around. Or if you're gonna be adding a lot of water, sink a pot over here on the corner, sink a pot in the soil and leave it there permanently. Just keep adding water to the pot. Water as needed, finger, do not water according to a weekly schedule. This is horrible uh, because more plants will die of drowning than they will of thirst. When a plant is thirsty, you know, because it goes mm -hmm. and it looks terrible. And you think, oh my gosh, I've lost this thing. So you water the plant and <laughs> back it comes and everybody's happy. But if it's dying of thirst, you won't know until it's too late. Oh, I'm sorry, a dying, a drowning. You won't know until it's too late. The bottom leaves will start to go yellow and brown and uh, you can save it, but it's gonna take a big effort. So finger check, that's my, my moisture check. Stick your finger in the pot, go down, find out how wet is it, and if it needs water, get some water to it. Indoor climate is warmer and drier than outside. You may have to add a bit of humidity. If you need that, you get yourself a tray, you put some rocks in the tray, you put your pots on top of the rocks, you put water in the tray, but no, don't let the pot touch the water. That defeats the purpose. And then the pot's gonna start sucking the water back up, as in water bottoming. Uh, you don't wanna do that. If necessary, use a humidity tent. Now, uh, some people grow marijuana and they need high humidity, uh, but you don't want high humidity in your house. It's not good, okay? So you might need a humidity tent. Uh, this is kind of like a, um, a greenhouse uh, in a, a spare room, okay? If you really need to do that. By the way, there's my tomato. And please note, yellow sticky paper, that's going to come up again. The little spots on the yellow sticky paper, guess what? Bugs. 
this tomato was never outdoors. Cash pot, bottom watering. What is a cash pot? Hidden pot inside another pot. So you've got a decorator outside pot, so everybody's happy in your home. And you've got an inexpensive liner pot, which you can remove. And you can sit the pot in a bowl of water, or you can pour some water in the decorator pot, sit the pot back in, let it suck up the water. And then when it's saturated, lift it out, pour off the egg, save it, save it, pour off the excess, and let the pot drain a bit, put it back in, and away you go. This is not a self-watering system. There are self-watering pots. This isn't it, okay? If you leave it in too long, drowning will happen. Fertilizers. Well, let's start. Seaweed is one of the best. If you can get it, but it's going to cost you money. It's expensive. Fish emulsion, uh, less expensive and you don't use a whole lot of it. Musky here on the side is a fish emulsion. I use it at uh, I use it at home, okay, and um, it's stinky. It, 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 well, it's fish, you know, come on. So it smells a bit, but the PK numbers, NPK, five, high nitrogen, low in phosphorus, low in potassium, okay? But that's okay when you're starting your plants indoors because they're going to be green, okay? I'm not growing my tomato yet. If I want my tomato, look down below vegetable food, eight, four, five. Four, five is good. Eight is still high nitrogen though. Now, what this means, this does not mean there's only eight units in that box. No, it means that eight units will be given daily. Okay, all this means is you've got eight units ready to eat. Kind of like going to one of them pizza places where they already made the pizza and you just buy it, okay? So um, over here for composted sheet manure, you're going to see 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. This is good. It sounds terrible, but it's good because you're going to get 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 every day. And you have to ask yourself, look, my lawn is thousands and thousands of plants standing ankle to ankle, they need high numbers. They need ready to eat and they want the, they want the whole smorgasbord, okay? The entire buffet, they want it now. Your garden or your potted plants, you've got tens, not thousands, tens and tens of plants and they're pampered. You pull out all the weeds, you water them carefully, you feed them and so on. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is very good. Look at my composter here, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0.2. I use compost all the time. I have four of them out back and I make my own. Okay, so if you haven't got your own composter, and a lot of people haven't got room for one, okay? Even though there are balcony ones, um, you can buy compost in the bag. You can buy composted manure. Please note, composted manure, don't buy manure. Composted manure. Uh, chicken is excellent. Sheep is excellent. Cow is not quite as good as sheep, but the difference is very small. And horse is not quite as good as cow. So it goes horse, cow, sheep, chicken. Okay, now chicken, this is approved for organics. There is a symbol on the top. It's uh, approved by EcoCert, okay? Uh, the numbers on this one are four, six, eight. Great for uh, getting um, fruit, vegetables. Now, it comes in pellet form. As soon as you add water, it's going to dissolve. So if you decide to use chicken manure, make sure you rake it in so that you can't see it. If you leave it on the surface and you add water, it's going to look like a fungus farm. It's going to get all furry and white and you're going to hate it. So don't let that happen. 
rake it in, make sure it's good, uh, nicely stirred. Uh, if you make a tea, well, that simply means take some compost, put it in a bag, stick it in some water. Well, now you're getting liquid nutrient. So if you make some uh, compost tea or comfrey tea, comfrey is a, a weed. I grow it all the time. It never dies. It's very invasive. I got to control it. So I cut it off completely at soil level and I throw it all in my compost or I take the leaves and I put them around my tomato plants as a mulch. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay. Or diluted pot runoff. And of course, worm castings. If you are into vermiculture, hallelujah, worm castings are fantastic. Uh, just a lot of people don't want a bunch of worms in their kitchen. Uh, okay. Uh, lawn lost to cinch bugs. Uh, and he'll mention lawn. And I'm going to talk a bit about this. I've got a few pictures here. Um, you're looking at this. Uh, I've already seeded it with Dutch white clover, but take all the green away and you'll see what my lawn looked like. It was brown, dead, not coming back. So I had to add some lawn soil and compost, which I have, and seed with Dutch white clover and rye grass, or get new grass seed mix okay and reseed the dead lawn bugs do not like dutch white clover or rye grass but they do like two of the usual grasses the three grass mix when you buy a grass mix it's usually three grasses for example canada bluegrass kentucky bluegrass and creeping red fescue well you're asking for trouble if you've got cinch bug they're going to come in the millions and you're going to lose your lawn Okay, they also like sod forming mixtures. Well, that's interesting because the area you're looking at at the top was sodded. The area below was not. The old lawn survived. It is biodiverse. It's got a whole mixture of different seeds in it. And it also has Dutch white clover brought in by the animals. Okay, so you want to be very careful about um, new sod. It could possibly uh, be completely eaten. Whoops. You can try to fight cinch bugs with soap and water. I tried it. I, uh, uh, I could see them coming in. It was like watching waves on the beach. They were coming in and coming in and coming in, and my lawn was disappearing. And I'm taking used dishwater, very soapy, and dousing it. Uh, I lost the lawn. I lost the war. So you could try, but I don't. I don't think you're going to be terribly successful. So that lawn I showed you that was green, it got bits of green. Now this is what it looks like. My neighbor's lawn was not affected, not affected. Mine was bone dry. My, uh, this other line here shows you the break between the new material I put in and the old grass. And now I've added Dutch uh, white clover and rye grass to the existing grass. Fertilize all lawns with high NPK numbers like 20, 20, 20, because they're hungry and there's thousands of plants. Feed them. Lawn care treatments will kill clover. A uh, colleague of mine, he liked clover lawn the way mine looks. Lawn care company was going next door. They made a mistake. They did his lawn instead. Everything gone. Dead. Weeding by hand is not fun, but it is organic and lawn is not chemical dependent. You do want to be careful. Some lawn treatments will make your lawn chemically dependent, addicted if you like, okay? And mm, you may not want that. Bug control, indoors mostly. Fruit flies, aphids, spider mites. These are, spider mites are bright red and the size of a pin. They're very tiny, 
but they're red. And you, if you've got them, you'll know it. Just look closely. And then there are fungus gnats. These are small flies, a little bit smaller than a fruit fly, okay? Uh, thinner, more anemic. Uh, and mealybugs, they look a lot like a small blister with a white fuzzy coat, okay? And they'll be on the stems of plants. Uh, you're looking here at aphids, which came in on an organic plant purchased at a grocery store. They have them. I brought, I purchased it. And uh, right now I'm showing you an ant. Ants farm the aphids. Now, this ant, uh, I got those two. <laughs> I'm trying to get rid of the darn things. Anyway, ants will farm the aphids because they milk them like cows. What they do is they stroke the back, they suck the honey. And when they stroke the back, the uh, aphid gives off a, a kind of honey and uh, the ants love it and they take it back to the neck. But they will also pick up the aphid and move it around to a better location. Uh, kind of interesting to watch. I have pictures. Solutions to all of this, spray with soapy water, squash the bugs by hand, well, if you need to, put a glove on, but you know they're not going to bite you. So, you know, you can just get in there and then wash your hands, soapy water. Uh, reduce moisture because many of the bugs don't like dry. They, they like moisture. And yellow sticky cards or traps. That's where we're going. Here we have yellow sticky cards. Uh, yellow is a very popular color to bugs. Not Every bug likes yellow. They like all kinds of other colors, but yellow will attract them. You'll notice that most vegetables uh, and herbs will put out a yellow flower or a flower with a yellow throat to bring the bugs in, okay? Now, here's a greenhouse uh, down around the Manatic. This is Suntech greenhouse. You'll notice they use the yellow sticky cards all over the place. And um, here I've used them as well. Bug infested plants, if it's, if it's hopeless, it's just covered in bugs. I was at a, uh, uh, a housing unit and they had a problem. They had plants that they brought in and they were just terrible. So put a bag over it, pull the whole thing out, dump the, uh, uh, the plant in your green bin. Yellow sticky paper works well because bugs are attracted to yellow, but catches all insects outdoors. So if you use these yellow sticky cards outdoors, and you might for flea beetle. Flea beetle likes your eggplant. If you uh, do use that, remember, you're gonna catch every bug that comes by. Eh, you plan on it, okay? Plan how you're gonna use it. Um, I do use them around my green bin and I catch well, you can't see the sticky card because it's covered with house flies. So covered, it's stunning. Okay. Insect management sprays, soap and water, uh, one part soap, 40 parts water. I confess, I don't do that. I take some water, I put a little soap. Not a lot of soap, I put a little soap. Okay, and um, I'm going to add a bit of alcohol if I've got a waxy surface over the bugs. Some of the bugs protect themselves with a bit of wax. Now, this is from Ed Lawrence. Um, I've tried this. It works very well, but I cheat on the soapy water. Okay, I do use a Castile Pure Soap. It's a little expensive. I buy it at a health food store. Uh, but if you use it, don't use the detergent, use a soap. Okay, the turns is not good for your plant. Okay, now, uh, if that's the case, uh, rinse after 10 minutes with clean water. Now to do that, you're gonna need a sprayer, one with soap, one without, okay? And you're gonna need to be able to spray under the leaves and over the leaves and so on. Now, when you do that, put it in your bathtub, <laughs> or if you've got a laundry sink, do that. You're gonna save yourself a whole lot of trouble. And in order, to keep the soapy water out of your plant, put uh, cardboard, cut a hole, put cardboard around your plant and stop or put uh, saran wrap or uh, I don't know, plastic bag, you've got a milk bag or something, keep the soapy water out of the soil. 
all in one. I don't recommend this. I yes, I've tried it, but it's got canola oil. I don't like oil. Okay, I, it's uh, it gums up my sprayers and so on. So um, this is an interesting all inclusive. If you want to go that route, skip the oil part. Uh, I don't think you really need it. That's a tablespoonful, you know. And of course, the easiest way to get rid of bugs is to shoot them off with a water jet. Just spray them off. Aphids, easily done. They don't, they don't uh, climb back on. To spray plants 360 degrees without tipping the container, make your own sprayer. I've talked to you about this, so I'm gonna zip through this. Save the nozzle, replace the plastic straw, Take the nozzle in for a fitting to your local hardware store, bore a hole and place an elastic. And unfortunately, when you put the gun down, it's gonna leak water. So you gotta keep that in mind. Uh, you don't want a surprise later on you come back, you find, whoa, I got water everywhere that I wasn't expecting. Well, it happens. Fruit flies. And this is a peanut butter jar well cleaned, okay? Put a piece of plastic, I took a, a milk bag, cut it, put it over top, elastics. I put some fragrant fruit. I'm going to be using oranges because that's what I had. I didn't, my, I didn't want to break into a mango or, you know, get into any of those things, uh, other things. So right now I'm using orange for demonstration. And I take a toothbrush, a toothpick, you can see the toothpick, I punch holes, boom, 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 and uh, put it near uh, your food and you'll catch food flies and they won't find their way back out. Okay. Aphids. Ah, dear, oh dear. Small bugs usually on the stalks of plants where they can suck the fluids out of the stalk, spray forcefully with water, but uh, try not to blow the plant apart with your spraying, you know. <laughs> Got to be cautious there. Run your fingers along the stem and squish them. Uh, you can do that. It's very easy. <laughs> they don't bite, but your hands will be very sticky because of the honey that they exude. And uh, you just need to wash some water. You're going to be fine. If it's all over your car, eh, get the hose out. It'll wash off. It can be all over your car. Spray with soap and water over and under, wait 10 minutes, clean water spray, very little soap, yada, yada, yada. I've talked about all of this and there uh, is uh, the same comment. Um, put a covering over your pot so that you don't end up getting a whole lot of soap into your container. Fungus gnat, small flies, mosquito size and, and anemic like mosquitoes, really thin, you know. <clears throat> One thing, reduce moisture on the surface of your pots. Uh, rake it in as soon as you've watered, rake it in, okay? And um, you see a couple of tools there, dollar store, dollar store. Uh, if you haven't got one of those, get a spoon, okay? Or a fork, and retired, and fork it in and you should be okay. Um, it's the surface fungus that attracts and supports the bugs, so don't let it form on the surface. Bottom water if possible by using a cash pot or place the pot in a bowl of little water uh, and uh, let the plant soak it up. After 20 minutes, get it out of the water. Mealy bugs. They're like small blisters with white fuzzy coats. Spray with soap and water over and under the plant, wait 10 minutes, and then respray with, uh, re -spray, spray with uh, clean water. Same old thing, except you're gonna have to do it every three days until they stop, okay? Because you will have missed eggs and they will come back. And we are done and ready for questions. <laughs>